Hello, Property Nomads. Hope you are well. Our wonderful Prime Minister has decided or he's going to try and implement price controls for supermarket food, which completely defeats the object. Um, but I guess you need to be seen to be doing something rather than doing nothing at all. Before we dive into the nooks and crannies of the price cap conundrum, debunking Sunak's approach, I'd like to say that our friends at Progressive Property are hosting a fantastic event in London on the 16th, 17th and 18th of June. It's the multiple streams of property income event. We've done it before. We highly recommend it. It's three intense and good fun days, a lot to take away and a lot to learn. So you can join Progressive Properties flagship multiple streams of property income event where you'll hear from the UK's top property investors and experts in buy to let, property trading, raising finance, service accommodation, deal sourcing, commercial property development, and much more. This is intensive, it's fun, it's rewarding, it's a three day course, it's the ultimate property networking event as well. It's helped tens and thousands of investors take steps towards financial freedom through creative property investment and life changing property education. As I said, it's 16th, 17th and 18th of June. It's in London. For all other information, the link is on the top of the show notes on the podcast platform you listen to this on, or if you're watching this on YouTube, just have a quick look below in the description and you'll see the link that you need in order to access the event. Highly recommend it. We've done it before. Uh, so it's fantastic. Even if you just go for the networking, I uh, highly recommend it. The link is in the show notes uh, on whatever podcast platform you are or down below on YouTube. So as we all know, inflation is through the roof uh, recently. We'll be for a little while as well, uh, above 10% on average, although that came down to 8.7% which is still quite high. And in order to try and combat this, our wonderful Prime Minister, who I'm sure as a, an ex-Goldman Sachs banker is not dense by any stretch of the imagination, he's come up with a genius idea, uh, something that we just haven't thought about before. And that is planning to encourage supermarkets to introduce price caps on food staples in the bid to help with the cost of living crisis. Now you're thinking, Rob, you're sounding very sarcastic about this. It's like people have done this before and it hasn't worked. Voila, uh, you and I are thinking the like today. Yes, price caps don't work. There's a number of reasons why it don't work. And there's a number of reasons why this won't work either. Let's look at the political point of view first. For the last X amount of years, uh, you know, let's let's be honest. Uh, whoever's in charge, conservative, Tor uh, conservative Tory, same thing, uh, Labour, conservative, whomever is in charge, uh, they're all equally as bad as each other. Okay, so let's let's set that aside. Secondly, people don't seem to want to learn from history at all. This all of this has happened before. Um, stuff happens, you know, pandemics happen or wars or whatever, whatever. The cycle repeats itself. And then when times get tough and things get tougher, for some unknown reason, people decide to want to bring in price caps when really they should let the free market sort it out. But we have to ask ourselves, why have we got a bunch of inflation uh, and so forth in the first place? Well, let's run back a few years. Uh, Black Swan event happens. And then the government's response to that is, oh, let's lock everyone down, no one move, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, by the way, uh, Bank of England, we need you to print a lot of currency. So get, get printing, get that printing press on. Let's print, 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 print. And of course, when you currency print, then you increase the supply of the currency, but you're getting the same amount of goods and services being produced or, or fewer goods and services being produced. Then that means prices are going to go sky high. Now, on top of all of that, because of um, NATO's want to continue expanding, um, that uh, led to 
Russia invading Ukraine. And then the government response to that was, well, if they're doing that, we're going to, um, uh, yes, yeah, stop Russian oil. Right. And this is where, under the guise of climate change, this is where all that nonsense started. But the thing with banning oil and all the other things that come with it, uh, so your nitrates, phosphates that you need for agricultural purposes, of course, we shot ourselves in the foot. So as a result of that, restricting the supply of those things, it means that in order to compensate for that, if you're a farmer uh, in, in England, uh, I imagine that your cost of production as a result of government decisions has gone through the roof. So if your cost of production has gone through the roof and you're then not getting subsidized by the government to produce things, and this is where my knowledge isn't as good as other people's will be. I don't know what is subsidized and what is not. But if you're then getting these hits to cost of production, and you know, I understand farmers are running a business, etc. They want to make a profit. I understand that. Nothing wrong with that at all. That's capitalism. What are they going to have to do? Unless they're getting subsidized massively from the same government that are imposing restrictions, they're going to have to increase the prices. Because their cost of production has increased, therefore the prices have to increase. There, and therefore, as a result of that, we've got, you know, yes, we've got a lot of generic inflation around and about, but food inflation, you know, has reached its highest point, I think, for 45 years. So we have to look at why it's happened in the first place, not just look at a snippet of history and go, well, this is bad, and you know, blah, 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 blah. Let's have a look at why it's happened and what's led us to where we are today. And that that explains it. So what do we do moving forwards? Well, again, when these sorts of things happen and they've happened before, you know, next we'll end up with Diocletian's edict to prices. Hopefully we won't have that. Uh, go and Google that if uh, you don't know what I'm talking about. And some geniuses decide to put price caps in. Now, as you know from listening to this show quite a lot, it's simple economics, you've got your supply and demand. A lot of the time, in order to fix the price of something or to sort things out, you need to be focusing on the supply of things, not the demand. And you let the free market sort it out. So the supply of eggs, milk, butter, all other products, bread, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's a supply issue. You've got to look at the supply issue. Why is it a supply issue? Well, it's everything we've just said, if the cost of production has gone up because farmers are finding it more difficult to get oil or, or gas or, or, or feed for their animals or phosphates and nitrates for, for plowing and all of these sorts of things, if they're finding it more difficult to do that, cost of production has gone up, prices go up. So really what the government needs to do, or it's not going to let the free market sort it out anyway, but secondly, all these daft sanctions that we've tried to impose uh, are shooting ourselves in the foot. Absolutely. They won't tell you that, but that's what's happening. The easiest thing is to focus on supply. Okay? Get on the phone to Russia. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Russians don't like us, and I don't think we like the Russians either. Just look at history to answer that one. Get on the phone. Like, okay, yeah, hi. Uh, yeah, let's, um, yeah, let's start importing some oil again. Or better still, you know, get all the permits up in place for the North Sea you know, get, get drilling that way. Uh, these, these sorts of things need to happen. But that's a bit waffly for the background. That's the background. So why don't price caps work? There's a multitude of reasons why they're not going to work. And it's a supply and demand imbalance. So price caps will disrupt the equilibrium between supply and demand. So we've just said that. If prices are artificially held below market levels, it, it will create an imbalance. So... That also means that suppliers, uh, farmers, etc., they're going to face there's less incentive because if your profit is capped or the price of something is capped, why are you going to bother producing that item? You know, why would you try and produce a loaf of bread and get 30p profit from a loaf of bread where, you know, if you've got the tools available, you can, I don't know, milk cows and earn you know, one pound for every litre of milk. I mean, they're just examples, but you get the point. 
you're going to be incentivized then to go after the more currency making activities on your farm. So the supply and demand imbalance from putting a price cap on, that's number one. That's what could happen. Reduced investment in agriculture. Now, this is similar to um, gas and oil companies from the point of view of all these tax windfalls, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and uh, greedy oil companies when actually, again, government policy has meant that the price of oil um, has dramatically gone up, which means, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. The same can happen in agriculture. Now, if you're facing price caps, then who's to say that the government won't try and impose more price caps on loads of other products? If you start doing that and you're thinking about buying farmland, I mean, you should buy farmland anyway, but if you're thinking about buying farmland and producing to that scale, why would you? Because if the government's going to put their arms in and affect prices or put price caps on, then you might not get a good return on investment. So therefore, the investment in agriculture might decrease anyway. Because if you find it economically unviable to produce something, then why would you produce it? It, it, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, you could get quality and safety concerns as well. So if that happens, how would that happen? If you have quality and safety concerns, uh, that be because people maybe want to try and cut corners. Because if they're getting capped at says price cap, then can they, how cheaply and effectively can you produce something? So again, you might cut corners to try and negate that. I'm not saying people would, but they might. And then you get, yeah, market distortions. Uh, again, price caps can create distortions within the food market. So when food items are capped, suppliers may shift their focus to, you know, other items. And this, again, can cause massive imbalances further on down the line. If you put a price cap on bread, for example, and then no one produces any more bread, what's going to happen to the price? Well, I guarantee at some point that price cap will go and the you know, price of bread will go through the roof. Next thing you know, be, there, there could be blood on the streets. I, I just don't know. In, in a nutshell, these are all things that I don't think government has thought of. As I said in the last episode, the government has either thought of these things and it's very sinister or they're just not thinking at all. I'd be inclined to go with the latter on this occasion. So... The price cap conundrum, debunking Sunak's approach. Sunak, uh, you seem a pretty intelligent guy. You must learn history. You must know some history about price caps and why they don't work. So I don't know why you'd pursue this route at all. Please do not pursue this route. It won't work. It's going to end up in absolute and utter disaster if you start trying to either force price caps or even by trying to implement price caps in any way, shape or form. That's not the right way to go about it. The right way to go about it uh, in order to sort of negate these things is look at the other side, look at the supply side. What can we do? What can government do? What can people do in general to help the supply side? Because the more supply gets onto the market and the cheaper the cost of production for the people that are producing the goods and services in the first place, then that means that we should see prices go down. Now, as with most supply side economics, there is no quick and easy fix. So, you know, we could start importing Russian oil tomorrow. That doesn't mean that, you know, prices are going to decrease by 35% straight away. The issue with supply side economics is it does take a long time, can take a long time for those things to start, start showing effect with regards to prices. But going back to the start of the episode as well, you have to look at the culmination of events over the last, or not even just events, policies as well, over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, and we've ended up with this scenario where I mean, I'm pretty sure at some point it's going to be absolute anarchy and blood on the streets. Um, I don't really like saying that, but I wouldn't say that if I didn't think it was true. I think it, we're just heading down that path at the moment. But that is a price cap debunked. 
Uh, Sunak, don't do it. Please don't do it. I think you're smarter than that. doesn't make sense. Focus on the supply side when it comes to food prices and, and let the farmers have access to the things that they need in order to produce good quality products for the rest of society to consume.